Hello, wonderful people of God. So we come your way this month with exciting news from the camp of our man of God, Dr. Abel Damina, as he shares insights with us on the knowledge of the scriptures concerning the character of God in salvation. So we want you to stay glued to your screen as you in Luke 24, 44, read for me, PJ, Luke 24, 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. In other words, when Jesus said, For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. What he explained was that the reason why Moses wrote all his books was concerning him. That is the reason behind the writings of Moses. That was why he further said, But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? How shall you believe my words? This also implies that Jesus taught his teachings. Jesus taught the teachings of Moses. Jesus gave the explanations that Moses gave. And Jesus taught doctrine from Moses' accounts. What we call the synoptic accounts. The synoptic accounts are not different. They are the same. Because the synoptics agree with Moses' writings. And when we are talking about the synoptic, we are talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They are the synoptic accounts. Alright, so they all agree. They all agree with the explanation of Moses' books. That was why we he further explained that the very essence of Moses' writings is his books, was for the Jews to believe in him, the Christ. If you remember, I've told you time without number, that when Jesus showed up in the incarnation, he didn't come with a Bible from the sky. He took Moses' teaching notes and taught from the same teaching notes. He didn't come with a volume of book and say, this is from above. Uh -uh. He came and took Moses' teaching notes. Remember we told you that Jesus' Bible was Genesis to Malachi. What Moses taught, what the prophets taught, what David taught, what major and minor prophets, Jesus took that as his Bible because there is consistency of doctrine. Which means it was God that spoke through them and Jesus just took that to explain where God spoke, from where man spoke, from where Satan spoke, from where angels spoke, and from where animals spoke. He did what we call exegesis and at the end of the day, the substance, the only substance that was in the writings of Moses and the only substance that was in the writings of the prophets, the only substance that was in the writing of David were the things concerning himself. That was the only substance. Which means the only message of Moses and the prophets that Jesus wants you to hear are the things concerning himself. Because the things concerning Jesus are the things concerning God. Jesus is the revelation of God. Look at John 5, 46. Again, PJ, read for me. John chapter 5, verse 46. <clears throat> for had he believed Moses, he would have believed me, for he wrote of me. So this is a continuation of Jesus' explanations earlier in that context. Look at John 5, 39 and 40. Read for me. John chapter 5 verse 39 and verse 40 search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me next verse and he will not come to me that he might have life now from the way this version king james version of the bible translated the above text it appeared like jesus was instructing the jews to search the scriptures this however is inconsistent with the preceding statements for in them you think you have eternal life. That is, for him to have said you think you have, it implies that his audience had a fair knowledge of the scriptures. So that text can better be understood as, he searched the scriptures 
For in them ye think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you may have life. The issue was not that they did not search the scriptures. Rather, it was the fact that they refused to agree in their minds. That the scriptures, Moses and all the prophets testify of the Christ. And that's why we're having all the drama, you know, on social media. People are not agreeing that the scriptures testify of Christ. They are looking for other things in the scriptures and they are not finding them in the complete package. Because the scriptures have a bias, the message of the Christ. Glory to God. That's why he said, you will not come to me that you might have life. What life? He taught them in context. John 5, 24 to 29. PJ, 24 to 29. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Next verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Next verse. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Next verse. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Next verse. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Last verse. And shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So the promise of life by God, which was spoken in all the prophets in the scriptures, was fulfilled in the resurrection. The promise of life was fulfilled in the resurrection. For except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But when it dies, it bringeth forth fruit. So in the resurrection, life was made available to all who believe in Christ. In the resurrection. This is in tandem with what Jesus taught earlier in John chapter 3 verse 14 to 18. Read for me PJ. John 3 14 to 18. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. Next verse. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Next verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Next verse. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Next verse. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Is condemned already because he has not believed. He is condemned already because he has not believed. So because he has not believed, he doesn't have eternal life. See that? And that's where the condemnation is. Because he has not believed... In verse 14, it says, just like Moses lifted up the serpent, to lift means to elevate or to exalt. We are so grateful for having you here on our platform. Kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here. And also, like this message for us. Do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from. Thank you, message community.